commercial developers are returning to the market. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. I want to have a look at this article from Commercial Real Estate discussing, well, more commercial property sales and developers returning to the market. Now remember, last year we were talking about uh, real estate investment trusts and interested to just consider the impact of this change in work culture, the retail recession that we were seeing, and people being able to work from home, and and just you know, wondering what impact that might have on these businesses that are dependent on commercial property. You know, we'll have to see. Will it be a drastic change? Will it reduce their ability to make money? Will they actually have to you know, negotiate decent rents? Let's have a look. So, Knight Frank reports record commercial property sales in New South Wales over the June quarter. Now, before we go through this, let's just look at the share price of one, uh, you know, commercial property holder, uh, which is the Dexas Property Group. And I'll just, I can't bring that to max, but we can see there they're sitting at $10.46. So not too bad. I'm just going to, you know, here we go. I will bring that to max now and we can see how they're doing now they they've fallen they haven't recovered to the level that they were but you know they're not at the bottom they're not at the bottom what do you reckon guys and the dividend yield isn't too bad can they maintain it though that's the question and what's your favorite let me know in the comments i've got a whole list of of reits that are on the stock exchange here what's your favorite real estate investment trust you know, do you invest in them do you hold them did you jump in any commercial ones so one of Australia's leading commercial agencies has reported record sales in New South Wales over the June quarter with a total value of transactions 40 to 50% up on this time last year. Of the 13 deals done over the three months, which added up to $90 million worth of commercial investment properties, eight were for development sites or properties with development potential, totaling more than $68 million. That's off the back of such a strong residential market, said Knight Frank, Associate Director of Investment Sales, Anthony Perotina, who was involved in many of the deals. Developers were very quiet just before COVID-19, and we had that period where everyone was afraid of buying off the plan. Everyone should be afraid of buying off the plan all the time. <laughs> I, I, yeah, okay. Come on, guys, we need to, we need to increase the 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 growth of the channel. So everyone in Australia is af afraid to buy off the plan. What do you reckon? And people only buy completed apartment buildings. Maybe that should be my dream. The goal of the channel. Actually, that might, yeah, that, that's probably dangerous for my life now. <laughs> anyway, as a result, there hasn't been any new supply for a while. But now with prices heading skyward and the residential market running strong, development sites have been a huge hit. These sites are particularly sought after in lockdown periods as it's not necessary to carry out physical inspections. The sites sold include one at 1618 Will Willandra Street in Lane Cove North with a deer already approved for a townhouse development that went for 6.5, one in 1.5 Stanley for 9 and a third in 248.250 and Marrickville Road was for 7.6. A fourth site at 527 Victoria Road Ride, approved for building a boarding house development, was snapped up for 1.4. That affordable end of the market is particularly strong with residential prices so high, Pirotina uh, said. The bottom part is a lot of demand, as many people can't afford the prices of houses and units and are going for new generations boarding. Wow. That's that's terrible. There you go. Future of Australia, guys. That's it. You can't afford a house. No, you're not going to get a quarter acre block like your family. You'll be living in a boarding house. Knight Frank reports that Sydney's investment market over the first half of 2021 was the strongest it had been in years, with 100% in clearance rate. There wasn't a single property over the six months that didn't find a buyer. Even strata offices in the Sydney CBD found a lot of competition among buyers, particularly after the state government announced the compulsory acquisition of three strata titled buildings to clear way for, the, for Sydney's Metro West line. Prices per square metre even broke records four to five times in the space of just five weeks. Those buildings have to be vacant possession, 
So we're seeing a lot of demand for companies who have to relocate, said Knight Frank Investment Sales exec Executive Andrew Harford. It's also creating a shortage in the supply of strata offices and demand is strong, particularly for sub 150 square meter properties. Companies aren't needing as big a footprint as they may have had before the CBD, but they still want to be there. This is allied with low interest rates and a lot of competitive debt around at the moment. Probably 80% of the buyers are owner occupiers and 20% are investors. There's a lot of pent up demand at the moment for companies and investors who'd put their buying plans on hold during the pandemic so far, but, what, uh, but we're now gaining confidence, he said. There's also a bit of psychology there, with people thinking that when Asian buyers are allowed back in, they'll be buying a lot, which will push up the market, he said. But even now, they seem happy to pay top prices for the kinds of properties they want. See, we don't, guys, we don't need to blame the, the Chinese returning for our property prices. We can, we can bubble up our own property here really well in Australia. You know, we can, we can make our homegrown property bubbles. We can do it, guys. Come on, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Get those houses to millions of dollars. Pump those apartment buildings up. Buy everything off the plan. Keep going. You can do it. Come on. Give us negative rates, Louie. Give us negative rates. It'll happen. And yes, this is coffee I'm drinking. I'm pre-recording these tonight because, uh, well, when you're watching these, I'll hopefully be reconfiguring my studio here. So we'll have to see how it goes. We'll have to see. Uh, you can tell, you know, I'll either succeed and you'll get the live stream or it'll be delayed by a day. <laughs> anyway, back to this. And you can see the market diverging between those properties that you almost can't give away, like aged care and cafes, which have really struggled during knockdowns and then the property that's more resilient to COVID such as supermarkets, pharmacies and service stations that have gone through the roof. The report also predicts that investment activity will pick up post lockdown with a backlog of properties to come to the market and pent up by demand which will provide a strong finish to the year. So there you go everyone. There you go. What do you think and what's the well the takeaway from all of this guys? Well, here's the thing. I like to have some exposure to commercial property and to you know the those sectors. I, that's why I like real estate investment trusts because I mean it's an easy way for a normal person to get some exposure to that sector. What we're seeing here is you know the the um, well the potential decline and the the concern that people will be abandoning the CBDs doesn't seem to have materialized yet. At least not quite now. You know, so we'll have to keep watching. Keep seeing what happens. Uh, there's another article uh, I, I've read where you know, people who are working from home are having their pays card. So I wonder if that will, you know, that will drive more people into the office. We'll have to see. What do you think, everyone? Are you a fan of real estate investment trusts? Have you bought into some of them? Do you think commercial is back or is the office dead? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can just simply interact with the channel. Like, comment, share, subscribe. It all helps. You can support us financially via joining us on YouTube or Patreon, using our affiliate links from Self Wealth or Stake if you're investing in shares. Use our other affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.